CataractCoach.com, Suda Exfoliation White Cataract with a divide and conquer technique. It's case number 350 for our guest surgeon, Dr. Pablo Rivera Perez de Rada from Spain. So the capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. There's the main incision and time for the capsule rexus. Now, in this case, it was noted to be a white cataract, but not intumescent. So you notice there's no milky liquefied cortex coming out of the capsular bag. So instead, we can go right to the forceps and create a capsule rexus. Now, the pseudo exfoliation eye, we definitely don't want a baby rexus. You want to have at least a 5 millimeter capsule rexus, and this looks pretty good. This video is going to be shown at three times normal speed, so I can show you the whole video from start to finish. So notice the capsule rexus is a very appropriate size and enlarging it here a little bit at the end. Okay, if it goes out a little bit like this, that's of course not going to cause any issues as long as it's continuous, which it is. A little viscologic to coat the endothelia, uh, the epithelium. And here comes some balance off solution for hydro dissection. Now often in these white cataracts, you don't have to do too much hydro dissection if they have liquefied cortex or even softened cortex. So that looks pretty good. Now the divide and conquer technique is a good technique and it's going to perform very well in this case. It's a technique that I don't frequently use, but a lot of surgeons here in the U.S. use it and certainly a lot of the training surgeons use it at the beginning of their careers or during their residency program. So there's the bevel up and making a groove here. And you can see that central groove is deeper in the center and thinner towards the periphery. Because remember, the human lens, the cataract lens is shaped like an M&M &M candy, thicker in the center and a little thinner in the periphery. So a little bit extra effort to go deep in that central part of the nucleus. Now, you can also extend these grooves that are being sculpted or you can just leave it as is, get the instruments deep in the groove like that and create the split. And now that the split has been achieved there, grooving can be continued for the um, heminucleal pieces in order to create quadrants. Now he's bringing up each quadrant and these are gonna be brought up with a higher vacuum mode. And then this last piece, again, a groove can be sculpted and then typically you'd sculpt the groove on lower vacuum, but it certainly can be sculpted on the high vacuum. The piece can be split apart. And now each piece we're using higher vacuum can be brought up to the iris plane and emulsified. And that second instrument can be used to just keep the pieces at the phaco tip and perhaps slice them a little bit if need be. So looking good here, removing that cataract with good efficiency. Now, this is the pink sleeve on the tip, on the phaco tip, which is usually about a 2.2 to 2.4 millimeter incision, which should be good. And it looks like the surgeon is sitting temporally here. There's the last piece. Chopper goes in the protective position or second instrument in the protective position. And we can get the last few fragments out. So not much cortex remaining in the capsule bag. We're going to remove that too. And so we'll polish up the capsule bag as well. Remember, these pseudo-exfoliation patients more likely to have capsular phimosis in the post-op period. That's where the anterior capsule rim will really um, phimose down and become smaller and more fibrotic. And so cleaning off those epithelial cells from the lens capsular bag is quite helpful. Viscoelastic to inflate the capsular bag. And now I'm going to insert the eye well. You see the certain hand there, maybe some manipulation or loading of the lens. But again, I wanted to show you the video in real time so you can see. Now, if you're doing 350 cataracts, if you're about that uh, uh, range of training, this is about where you should be. So Dr. Pablo is doing a beautiful job, and he is um, right where he should be. Certainly, your skills will continue to improve as you operate more and more. And like I always tell you, you can't be a great cataract surgeon until you've done at least 1,000 cases. you got to see a lot of these complications. So slight enlargement of the incision here using the keratome and fixating the eye with the second hand. And now here comes the lens. So zooming out here a little bit, looks like a three-piece lens, getting that tip inside the eye. First haptic coming out, remember our 7L rule. There's the first haptic, like the number seven, beautiful optic coming out. And that trailing haptic is going to be in the orientation of the 
uppercase L. So let's flip that over a little bit. There it is. It goes in the eye quite nicely. And you can see that Caps Rex is good size. It overlaps the optic. The one area where it went out a little bit is of no consequence. And again, this patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. Going behind the eye wall to remove the viscoelastic. This is a really nice case. So I want to thank Dr. Pablo for a beautiful surgery. He certainly has good hands, and I anticipate he's going to be an outstanding surgeon after 1,000 or 2,000 more cases. And if you're in your training, you should certainly be able to achieve a very similar case like this.